Biomarkers are essentially chemicals or molecules in the body that we can use as tracers of either particular diagnoses or uh, indicators of how active a disease is. So in the case of lupus, these are specific uh, molecules, chemicals, or substances produced by cells in the body, often immune cells in the body, that are more either more common in uh, patients with lupus um, or perhaps only exclusively seen in patients with lupus, or track with changes in how patients with lupus feel. Um, so, exa for example, they may increase during times of worsened disease activity. So, in the presence of skin rashes, in the presence of worse kidney disease, they may be uh, elevated if we test them, most often tested in the blood, but can also be tested in other fluids. Um, so, they're markers. Uh, and indirect indicators over and above or in addition to markers of how you feel or and indicators of how active lupus is um, that uh, your physician may uh, determine based on exams or um, routine blood tests. Biomarkers are an important area of investigation um, because um, we're always searching for better ways, ways to improve the diagnosis, um, and ways that we can better track how active a person's lupus is. Um, we know that certain indicators seen, that are currently available um, don't seem to work uh, as well in every patient with lupus. Um, they may work very well in a particular person and not uh, be an indicator at all in, a, in another person. So we're always on the hunt for improved biomarkers. Um, one of the uh, other uses of biomarkers is that if we find a chemical or a molecule that's really tightly associated with lupus, that sort of going backwards tells us something in addition about what may be the underlying cause of lupus. The new the class of biomarkers uh, take advantage of really the revolution that's happened in the last uh, five to ten years in both immunology and biotechnology. Um, the knowledge base in both of those fields is uh, exploding. Um, has exploded and it's currently still exploding. And we are the beneficiaries of that knowledge because it's telling us a lot of information about the molecules on the surface of immune cells that might be involved in lupus, um, the chemicals that these immune cells secrete into the bloodstream, uh, or the um, genetic levels of activity. We know now that certain genes can get turned on and turned off, and some particular sets of genes get preferentially, preferentially turned on in people with lupus compared to people without lupus. Some genes, it appears, are preferentially associated with active lupus rather than inactive lupus. We reviewed the medical literature for the past uh, five years, from mid-2004 to mid-2009, uh, looking to see if we can identify um, new biomarkers in uh, patients with lupus. Uh, and we found uh, over uh, 100 new candidate biomarkers that have been studied in the very, very early phases. We found that uh, in lupus, uh, overall, they're pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. And certainly in studies of early biomarker testing in lupus, um, outperformed similar studies going on in rheumatoid arthritis, for example. Uh, it's still up in the air as to how many of those may be useful and how many in the future may wind up being something that you could go to your doctor uh, and have tested.
I think the bigger dam, bigger danger is uh, abandoning promising biomarkers uh, prematurely uh, because the first test didn't work out. Um, and I think if we pay careful attention to how uh, to design these studies from the start, uh, we'll have a better uh, understanding of what they're actually telling us. Um, uh, as a practical matter, uh, going from the initial idea to something that could be uh, ordered in a doctor's office is going to be certainly longer than five years. Thank you.